Wasp 103 is an F-type main sequence star you see It's located far away in the constellation Hercules Wasp 103 is an F-type main sequence star, that's me I have an elongated planet named Wasp 103b My name's Wasp 103, an F-type main sequence star you see Located far away in the constellation Hercules Hercules is 2100 million light years away from the earth in the solar system is where I stay. I have a concentration of heavy elements similar to your sun, but I'm slightly younger than the star of your solar system. I'm too hot for star spots to form within, so I have solar facula. It means little torch in Latin. Plus 103 is an F-type main sequence star, you see. It's located far away in the constellation Hercules. Wasp 103 is an F-type main sequence star that's me i have an elongated planet named wasp 103b i do have a planet found in 2014 i will introduce this planet called wasp 103b my name is wasp 103b i'm not sure i'm a dwarf candidate but i'm classified as a super jupiter planet i'm much more massive than jupiter your planet so large i'm 1.5 jupiter masses spinning through space as i charge I'm located 1225 light years from Earth in the Hercules constellation I set forth. My shape isn't round to any degree. I'm elongated like a potato or a rugby ball you'd see. My atmosphere contains water and possibly hydrogen, cyanide, and titanium oxide around me. I may be a carbon planet. You wonder what is that then? It's a theoretical planet containing more carbon than oxygen. I orbit my main sequence star WASP-103. Once every 22 hours, I hope you'd agree. Wasp 103 is an F-type main sequence star, you see. It's located far away in the constellation Hercules. Wasp 103 is an F-type main sequence star, that's me. I have an elongated planet named Wasp 103b. I'm a quasi-star, also called the black hole star. How bizarre, I'm a hypothetical type of extremely massive luminous star. I'm a quasi-star, I may have existed early in the history of the universe. Now let's learn more about me. I'm a quasi-star, and I am hypothetical, but what's this? It means I haven't been proven as yet to exist. I'm a theorized star, bigger than a red supergiant star. At 10 billion kilometers in radius, I'd be the biggest by far. Here's a size comparison of what I'd look like hypothetically in our universe against other stars, so you can clearly see. Let's start with your sun in the center of your solar system with a radius of 696,347. The sun is classified as a yellow dwarf star, which is massive to humans, but very small compared to other stars. I'm 7,000 times the size of your sun, which is quite impressive in size. I'd be bigger than anyone. This is Pollux, a red giant star. It's 5.5 million kilometers in size this far. But when you compare it to me, it really looks tiny. I would consume it if it got too close, pulling it in with my gravity. Here's a red super giant star going by the name of Betelgeuse with a radius of 617 million kilometers of energy to produce. But when compared to me, it is plain and clear to see. I am tremendous next to it. Let's move on to the next star next to me. This is you, I scoot tight, red super giant as well. At 1.1 billion kilometers, it's massive, you can tell. This is what it looks like when compared to me in size. It's hard to fathom just how massive I am, it's no surprise. This is a red super giant, or possibly a red hyper giant star. It goes by the name of Stevenson 2 18, it's the biggest by far. It has a radius in kilometers of 1.4 billion in size. As you can see, it's small compared to me in the night sky. Maybe astronomers can discover a quasi-star like me someday. You could study astronomy and make me a reality. I am the sun, the center of your solar system. I do erupt intense high energy radiation. This radiation I expel is called the solar flare. You'll learn about them in the sun.
long and why you should care. The sun is a ball of plasma like an extremely hot ocean shaped like a wheel. This plasma is pushed around and shaped by the sun's magnetic field. When the sun's plasma swirls around by its magnetic field, it gets twisted and releases energy around sunspots. They are real. This energy released is caused by magnetic knots. When one of these knots breaks, it releases solar flares so you are taught. Solar flares are waves of high energy radiation shot through the solar system in which we are all one. These solar flares race through space at the speed of light, creating a solar proton storm. These storms are no delight. When millions of tons of plasma are thrown from the sun's atmosphere, these storms are called coronal mass ejections as you see right here. These CMEs reach speeds of 5.6 million miles per hour. When they hit Earth, it doesn't hurt living beings even with such power. The Earth's atmosphere protects life from the biggest solar storms by absorbing the impact so beings on the surface are safe from harm. When a CME is too big, it creates a solar superstorm that occur once or twice a century, so you've been warned. If a solar superstorm did happen in this day and age, it would shoot billions of tons of plasma from the sun, I do say. If this type of CME traveled across space towards the Earth, it would reach you in one day. Yeah, that's fast for what that is worth. Its shock wave would compress Earth's magnetic field, making it frail. The two magnetic fields would merge, stretching Earth's field into a thin tail. This stretched tail can't contain this energy anymore. When it snaps, it releases explosive energy towards the Earth that it stored. This creates something very rare called the geomagnetic storm. Normally, no living thing on Earth would even know it had formed. The only thing it would affect is your electricity. Because you rely on this so much, it would disrupt human life, you see. Because Earth is covered in millions of electric wires and transformers, this geomagnetic storm would shut down the power. Humans would be overturned. If one of these storms hit the Earth, electricity and internet would not work. All things powered by electricity would turn off along with all networks. Computers would wouldn't work along with phones and electronic devices, no refrigerators or any other household appliances. Even though we can't stop these terrible solar storms, their nasty side effects can be prevented by how we are warned. Engineers would have a day or two to unplug major power grids until the solar storm passes Earth, preventing blackouts we forbid. Humans need to prepare for these types of storms to prevent being thrown back to the stone age before they form. A cool event humans experience from any solar storm is the aurora borealis at the two poles is where they perform. I'm the life-giving sun, you all need me to live, but I am unpredictable, so solar storms I give. I am the sun, the center of your solar system. I do erupt intense high energy radiation. This radiation I expel is called the solar flare you learn about them in this song and why you should care my name is rigel a blue white super giant star in the orion constellation I am the brightest so far. William Herschel studied astronomy. In the year of 1781, he discovered me. I have an estimated age of seven to nine million years as for an estimate that's fine i've exhausted my core of hydrogen fuel becoming a super giant after i expanded and i cool i expect to end my life as a type 2 supernova here is more leaving a neutron star or black hole but no one knows for sure i'm classified as a blue white super giant star how fun which is a hot luminous star that's bigger than your sun I belong to the Orion con 
constellation Locate me from the celestial equator From Earth on my run I am visible throughout the world Of this I am sure Located in the hunter's leg Of Orion I assure From the Earth my distance is 860 light years to be clear One light year is the distance Light travels in one Earth year 61,500 to 363,000 Times as luminous as the sun My brightness is so grand But I'll vary slightly in brightness Until the day I'm done I'm thought to be 18 to 24 times more massive than your sun my radius is a straight line from my center to my circumference Which is more than 70 times that of your sun in reference My surface temperature is 12,100 kK Meaning Kelvin, a base unit of temperature in the SI I say The next time you're out at night, look for Orion in the sky Look for the hunter's leg, I'm bright to the naked eye My name is Rigel a blue white super giant star in the Orion constellation. I am the brightest so far. My name is Rigel. A blue white super giant star in the Orion constellation. I am the brightest so far. Circumstellar disc, my name is AG100546. I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disc from the constellation of Musca. Now hear this. My name is HG100546. I'm 316.4 light years from your Earth with exoplanet. I'm a star with a circumstellar disk from the distance of 0.2 AU to a few hundred AU. Now this. I'm found in the constellation of Musca. Hear this. I'm a B type star with an exoplanet that does orbit. I have an exoplanet that goes by the name you see. It is HD. 100546B I'm HD 100546B I was discovered at the very large telescope in Chile Astronomers think I might be a large planet or brown dwarf Located in the disk around my star on my orbital course I'm a gas giant exoplanet, they know this for sure My mass is 752 Jupiters One orbit takes 249 years around my star I'm 53 AU away from my star That is far My discovery was announced in 2014 That's all I have to report That's enough about me I am back again It's HD 100546 Let me tell you a bit more About my disc My circumstellar disc was observed By the Hubble telescope Which should spiral patterns What they mean no one really knows My disc is fairly flat With a circular shape With a wide gap thought to be carved By my exoplanet How great When looking at the night sky Try to locate the constellation of Musca But you have to look late I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disc My name is AG100546 I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disc From the constellation of Musca Now hear this We're Alpha Centauri, the closest star system to the solar system your Earth is from. Alpha Centauri is a triple star system. We're 4.37 light years away from your sun. We're Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, which forms a pair of stars called binary. Alpha Centauri A officially Rigel Centaurus. Alpha Centauri. Centauri B officially Toliman I trust Centauri C officially Proxima Centauri Here we'll learn about our size and our luminosity Alpha Centauri A and B are sun-like stars We're the brightest stars in the constellation Centaurus by far Alpha Centauri A has
as 1.1 times the mass and 1.5 times the luminosity of the sun in this class. Alpha Centauri B is smaller and cooler, you should know, at 0.9 times the sun's mass and 0.4 the luminosity shown. We orbit around a common center or around one another so you'd understand better with an orbital period of almost 80 years by far and from a distance we're so close we look like one star i'm proxima centauri a small and faint red dwarf star you cannot see me with the naked eye though i'm the closest star by far i'm about 4.24 light years from the earth and i'm the closest star to the sun for what that is worth discovered in 1915 by astronomer robert Eins, i'm sure in south africa at the union observatory in johannesburg my latin name proxima centauri means when this is defined the nearest star of centaurus that's all that's assigned we're alpha centauri the closest star system to the solar system your earth is from alpha centauri is a triple star system we're 4.37 light years away from your sun we're alpha centauri a and alpha centauri b which forms a pair of stars called binary alpha centauri a officially rigel Centaurus. alpha centauri b officially toliman i trust centauri c officially proxima centauri here we'll learn about our size and our luminosity Saturn will come within 0.1 degrees of each other, forming the first visible double planet in 800 years will clutter on the winter solstice, December 21st in 2020. 
Look to the night sky to see this event The joy it'll bring is plenty Alignments between Jupiter and Saturn are pretty rare Only occurring around once in every 20 years But this upcoming conjunction's exceptionally rare Only because of how close we planets will appear It said the last time this occurred was in medieval times In the year of 1226 was the closest that we aligned Alignments between these two planets happens once every 20 years But this conjunction will be very rare because of how close we appear We'll be aligning on the same day as the winter solstice On December 21st, 2020, the whole world can witness this If you live in the northern hemisphere, looking low in the southwestern sky You can see a shining bright shortly after sunset with the naked eye We'll appear extremely close for about a month ahead But we won't make such a close approach again until the year 2400 Typically Jupiter orbits the sun every 12 years Saturn's orbit around the sun takes about 30 years Every couple of decades Jupiter laps Saturn in flight Be sure to watch the sky December 21st in 2020 at night Jupiter and Saturn will come within 0.1 degrees of each other Forming the first visible double planet in 800 years will clutter On the winter solstice, December 21st in 2020 Look to the night sky to see this event, the joy it'll bring is plenty Jupiter and Saturn will come within 0.1 degrees of each other Forming the first visible double planet in 800 years will clutter on the winter solstice, December 21st in 2020 Look to the night sky to see this event, the joy it'll bring is plenty We're all stars, we're all stars compared to each other by size You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky we're all stars, we're all stars, our colors vary, you know We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium, here we go I'm the Crab Pulsar, a young neutron star I'm Calvera, an isolated neutron star that's far My name's Bela X1, I'm a neutron star as well Sirius B, that's me, a small white dwarf as you can tell I'm EBLMJ 555-57AB My name's Trappist-1, an ultra cool red dwarf star in sight I'm Proxima Centauri, a main sequence red dwarf star I am your son, a yellow dwarf that isn't too far Alpha Centauri A is an orange star you see I am Sirius A, a main sequence star, that's me we're all stars, we're all stars compared to each other by size You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky We're all stars, we're all stars, our colors vary, you know We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium, here we go VFTS-352, contact binary 1 and 2 Composed of two very hot brain massive stars that orbit each other, it's true my name is Pollux, a red giant star here Arcturus is a red giant star, I hope I made that clear R136A1 is a wolf riot star thus far I'm Aldebaran, a red giant star, that's me Rigel is here, a blue white super giant you can see I am Beetlejuice and I'm a red super giant in class VY Canis Majoris, a red hyper giant star with mass I'm UI Scutai, the biggest red super giant this far Join us to sing the chorus, now get your head out of the stars We're all stars, we're all stars compared to each other by size You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky 
We're all stars, we're all stars, our colors vary, you know We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium, here we go We're all stars, we're all stars, compared to each other by size You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky We're all stars, we're all stars, our colors vary, you know We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium, here we go I am UI Scutai, the largest star in our galaxy. Find me in the night sky. I am UI Scutai, a red supergiant in the Scutum constellation. Am I? I was first cataloged in 1860 by German astronomers at Bonn Observatory. I was named BD-125055 Until my second survey I was found to be slightly more bright That's when I was named UI Scutai The 38th variable star of the constellation Scutum Am I? I'm the largest known star in the Milky Way galaxy But because I'm so far from Earth You need a telescope to see me I'm 30 times the sun's mass But I have a radius more than 1700 times greater than the Earth's sun I span I am UI Scutai The largest star in our galaxy Find me in the night sky I am UI Scutai A red supergiant in the Scutum constellation Am I? I'm 9500 light years away from your Earth One light year equals about 5.88 trillion miles Worth. I'm known to be one of the most luminous stars And I am a red supergiant, I hope you like me so far I'm close to the supermassive black hole Sagittarius A Galactic center, which is the center of our galaxy I'm so large if you replaced your sun with me My photosphere would span past Jupiter's orbit As you can see, i begun to fuse helium And continue to fuse hydrogen in the shell around my core based on models of stellar evolution after fusing heavy elements my core will begin to produce iron disrupting the balance of gravity and radiation in its core and resulting in a core collapse supernova which is expected in stars like me look for me in the night sky within your galaxy I am UI Scutai the largest star in our galaxy, find me in the night sky I am UI Scutai A red supergiant in the Scutum constellation, am I? I am UI Scutai The largest star in our galaxy, find me in the night sky I am UI Scutai a red super giant in the Scutum constellation, am I? I am Beetlejuice, I'm nearing the end of my life One of the top ten brightest stars up in the night sky I am a red super giant expected to explode into a supernova in a hundred thousand years or so I received the name Beetlejuice in 1836 by Sir John Herschel, an astronomer and a great scientist I'm the second brightest star in the Orion constellation after the star Rigel, we're seen from any of Earth's nations. My diameter's about 700 times that of your sun, and I'm 640 light years from the Earth, that's quite a run. But my surface temperature 6,000 degrees in Fahrenheit, cooler than your sun's surface 10,000 degrees, yeah that's right. I'm so massive if you replaced your sun with me, I'd reach past the orbit of Jupiter, I'm gigantic you see. I'm considered a young star at just 10 million years old soon to explode into a supernova scientists say so i am beetlejuice i'm nearing the end of my life one of the top 10 brightest stars up in the night sky i am a red super giant expected to explode into a supernova in a hundred thousand years or so 
A red super giant is an aging giant star that has consumed its course supply of hydrogen fuel, that's what they are. Helium has accumulated in my core so well, and hydrogen's undergoing nuclear fusion in my outer shells. When my outer shells expand, I take on a red color because I'm cooler than I was, I'm happy to discover. Red super giants are the largest known stars in the universe, and I'm expected to supernova onto the next verse. During fusion, heavier atoms are created until my core is iron. That's when I'll run out of fuel without even trying. When that happens to a star as massive as me, the entire star collapses and explodes as a supernova, you see. When I do supernova, I'll create quite a sight. Some predict I'll even look like your full moon's brightest light. The radiation I put off from becoming a supernova wouldn't affect Earth because I'm 640 light years over. I am Beetlejuice, I'm nearing the end of my life. One of the top 10 brightest stars up in the night sky. I am a red super giant expected to explode into a supernova in a hundred thousand years or so. This is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know, of course. I am Ceres. I am a dwarf planet. Maki Maki's a dwarf planet as well, but didn't plan it. I am Hamea, a dwarf planet in this group. Pluto is a dwarf, but used to be a planet, it's true. Aries is a dwarf planet in this mix. The Earth's moon is where your eyes are transfixed. Mercury is here, an official planet. I'm the planet of Mars, I'm sure you all know this. I'm planet Venus, my size you may think is large. Planet Earth is next, and the humans think that they're in charge. Neptune's a planet in our solar system, wow! Planet Uranus is here, I wish I could take a bow. Planet Saturn has rings, if you think I am big. Check out Planet Jupiter, I hope you can dig. This is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know, of course. I am the sun, a yellow dwarf that isn't far. I am Sirius A, a main sequence star. My name is Pollux, a red giant star, it's true. Arcturus is a red giant star, this I thought you knew. I'm Aldebaran, a red giant star, that's me. Hi, I'm Rigel, a blue-white super giant, you see. I am Beetlejuice, and I'm a red super giant in class. I'm in Tories, I'm a red super giant that won't last. V.Y. Canis Majoris, a red hyper giant star. I'm U.Y. Scutai, the biggest red super giant this far. I am the Milky Way Galaxy, and you live in me. Now let's all sing the chorus together with glee. This is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know, of course. This is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know, of course. I am the Y Canis Majoris, one of the largest stars known in the present universe. I am the Y Canis Majoris. My home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course. I'm believed to be discovered in 1801 when French astronomer Jerome Lalande locked me in my recordings begun. A red class.
class I'm hyper giant What I'm classified as Now let's focus a bit closer On what makes up this star class Hyper giant stars Show tremendous luminosities And have very high rates of mass loss By stellar winds you see My distance from the earth Is about 4,000 light years away One light year equals About 5.9 trillion miles I'd say I used to be the largest star in the universe Sky dwarfed me. I am the wide Canis Majoris, one of the largest stars known in the present universe. I am the wide Canis Majoris. My home's a Milky Way galaxy. This is an interstellar course. If you wanna locate me while looking up in the night sky, you'd have to use the telescope. You can't see me with the naked eye. Of Canis Major and look to the left to the Delta Star for a fixation. 990 million kilometers is my radius. Aren't you glad you are paying attention and learning all of this? 5,822 degrees in Fahrenheit is what my temperature is thought to be. I'm hot and extremely bright. And if I replace the sun in your present solar system, I would consume all planets past Jupiter like they were. Majoris, one of the largest stars known in the present universe. I am the Y Canis Majoris. My home's a Milky Way galaxy. This is an interstellar course. Massive stars like me, we live a very, very short life. I'm reaching the end of my existence, which is part of my strife. I rapidly shed mass because I'm running out of fuel in my course. Scientists think I'll explode. Majoris, one of the largest stars known in the present universe. I am the Y Canis Majoris. My home's a Milky Way galaxy. This is an interstellar course. I am the Y Canis Majoris, one of the largest stars known in the present universe. I am the Y Canis Majoris. My home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course. This is the stellar evolution of a star in the universe. A nebula is the beginning of a star before its birth. The star names you will encounter are some basic different stages in the evolution of a star and all its basic changes. I'm a molecular cloud. I'm a type of nebula. I have a high density and a very low temperature. This combination creates a gas molecular hydrogen. That's primarily what I'm made of along with cosmic dust within. When the force of gravity exceeds the outward push of gas, the pressure is so great that I can't help it and start to collapse, which is caused from a shockwave from a near exploding star. Or when two molecular clouds collide, now isn't that bizarre? When the gravity's too strong, I break apart into smaller clouds. Each cloud is a star's beginning in which I am very proud. Protostars are the name of the clouds that do break free. Let me introduce a protostar that was a part of me Hello there, I'm the beginning of any kind of star Let me introduce myself to you, I am a protostar My core is not hot enough for fusion to occur To achieve that level of stardom, that process is a chore The first thing I do when I break free from my molecular cloud I start to spin until I form this disc around me you see now As the disc rotates I produce a strong magnetic field Pulling gas and dust into my center core as I reveal The infalling gas releases a kinetic energy Creating heat increasing the temperature in the center of me At this point I can transform into a hydrogen burning star Which is when the nuclear fusion 
confusion starts in a proto star. This is when I cross over to stage three called Titori. We play our different roles in the star formation you see. This is the stellar evolution of a star in the universe. A nebula is the beginning of a star before its birth. The star names you will encounter are some basic different stages in the evolution of a star and all its basic changes. I'm a Titori star now, also a pre-made sequence star. My job's to clear away the dust and gas and send it really far. My stellar winds create bipolar outflows that decrease my mass. Till I'm a main sequence star, my center burning nuclear gas. Now I'm a main sequence star, now just like the sun you know. Four billions of years I will burn throughout my light show. Converting hydrogen to helium is how fusion exists. It wants to blow me apart but has a hard time doing this. Cause of gravity of equal power pushing me in. I'm able to stay burning since the fusion did begin. There are many different kinds of stars throughout the universe. Go learn about them. They are birthed. This is the stellar evolution of a star in the universe. A nebula is the beginning of a star before its birth. The star names you will encounter are some basic different stages in the evolution of a star and all its basic changes. This is the stellar evolution of a star in the universe. A nebula is the beginning of a star before its birth. The star names you will encounter are some basic different stages in the evolution evolution of the star and all its basic changes. I'm a quasi-star, also called the black hole star. How bizarre, I'm a hypothetical type of extremely massive luminous star. I'm a quasi-star, I may have existed early in the history of the universe. Now let's learn more about me. I'm a quasi-star and I am hypothetical, but what's this? It means I haven't been proven as yet to exist. I'm a theorized star, bigger than a red supergiant star. At 10 billion kilometers in radius, I'd be the biggest by far. Here's a size comparison of what I'd look like hypothetically in our universe against other stars, so you can clearly see. Let's start with your sun in the center of your solar system with a radius of 696,347. The sun is classified as a yellow dwarf star, which is massive to humans, but very small compared to other stars. I'm 7,000 times the size of your sun, which is quite impressive in size. I'd be bigger than anyone. This is Pollux, a red giant star. It's 5.5 million kilometers size this far but when you compare it to me it really looks tiny i would consume it if it got too close pulling it in with my gravity here's a red super giant star going by the name of beetlejuice with a radius of 617 million kilometers of energy to produce but when compared to me it is plain and clear to see i am tremendous next to it let's move on to the next star next to me this is you i scoot i a red super giant as well it's massive, you can tell This is what it looks like when compared to me in size It's hard to fathom just how massive I am, it's no surprise This is a red super giant, or possibly a red hyper giant star It goes by the name of Stevenson 2-18, it's the biggest by far It has a radius in kilometers of 1.4 billion in size As you can see, it's small compared to me in the night sky Maybe astronomers can discover a quasi-star like me someday The sun, the center of your solar system. I do erupt intense high energy radiation. This radiation I expel is called the solar flare. You learn about them in the song and why you should care. The sun is a ball of plasma, like an extremely hot ocean shaped like a wheel. This plasma is pushed around and shaped by the sun's magnetic field. When the sun's plasma swirls around by its magnetic field, it gets twisted and releases energy around sunspots they are real this energy released 
is caused by magnetic knots. When one of these knots breaks, it releases solar flares, so you are taught. Solar flares are waves of high energy radiation shot through the solar system in which we are all one. These solar flares race through space at the speed of light, creating a solar proton storm. These storms are no delight. When millions of tons of plasma are thrown from the sun's atmosphere, these storms are called coronal mass ejections, as you see right here. These CMEs reach speeds of 5.6 million miles per hour. When they hit Earth, it doesn't hurt living beings, even with such power. The Earth's atmosphere protects life from the biggest solar storms by absorbing the impact, so beings on the surface are safe from harm. When a CME is too big, it creates a solar superstorm that occur once or twice a century, so you've been warned. If a solar superstorm did happen in this day and age, it would shoot billions of tons of plasma from the sun, I do say. If this type of CME traveled across space towards the Earth, it would reach you in one day. Yeah, that's fast for what that is worth. Its shock wave would compress Earth's magnetic field, making it frail. The two magnetic fields would merge, stretching Earth's field into a thin tail. This stretch tail can't contain this energy anymore. When it snaps, it releases explosive energy towards the Earth that it stored. This creates something very rare called the geomagnetic storm. Normally, no living thing on Earth would even know it had formed. The only thing it would affect is your electricity. Because you rely on this so much, it would disrupt human life, you see. Because Earth is covered in millions of electric wires and transfer for MERS, this geomagnetic storm would shut down the power, humans would be overturned. If one of these storms hit the earth, electricity and internet would not work. All things powered by electricity would turn off along with all networks. Computers wouldn't work along with phones and electronic devices. No refrigerators or any other household appliances. Even though we can't stop these terrible solar storms, their nasty side effects can be prevented by how we are warned. Engine Engineers would have a day or two to unplug major power grids until the solar storm passes Earth, preventing blackouts we forbid. Humans need to prepare for these types of storms to prevent being thrown back to the Stone Age before they form. A cool event humans experience from any solar storm is the Aurora Borealis at the two poles is where they perform. I'm the life-giving sun, you all need me to live, but I am on Predictable, so solar storms I give. I am the sun, the center of your solar system. I do erupt intense high energy radiation. This radiation I expel is called the solar flare. You learn about them in the song and why you should care. My name is Rigel, a blue-white supergiant star in the Orion constellation. I am the brightest so far. William Herschel studied astronomy in the year of 1781. He discovered me. I have an estimated age of seven to nine million years as for an estimate that's fine i've exhausted my core of hydrogen fuel becoming a super giant after i expanded and i cooled i expect to end my life as a type 2 supernova here is more leaving a neutron star or black hole but no one knows for sure i'm classified as a blue white super giant star how fun which is a hot luminous star that's bigger than your sun i belong to the orion con Constellation, locate me from the celestial equator from Earth on my run. I am visible throughout the world, of this I am sure. Located in the hunter's leg of Orion, I assure. From the Earth, my distance is 860 light years to be clear. One light year is the distance light travels in one Earth year. 61,500 to 363,000 times as luminous as the sun, my brightness is so grand. But I'll vary slightly in brightness until the day I'm done. I'm thought to be 18 to 24 times more massive than your sun. 
My radius is a straight line from my center to my circumference, which is more than 70 times that of your sun in reference. My surface temperature is 12,100 kK, meaning Kelvin, a base unit of temperature in the SI. I say, the next time you're out at night, look for Orion in the sky. Look for the hunter's leg. I'm bright to the naked eye. My name is Rigel. A blue white super giant star in the Orion constellation. I am the brightest so far. My name is Rigel. A blue white super giant star in the Orion constellation. I am the brightest so far. Circumstellar disc, my name is AG100546. I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disc from the constellation of Musca. Now hear this. My name is HG100546. I'm 316.4 light years from your Earth with exoplanet. I'm a star with a circumstellar disk from the distance of 0.2 AU to a few hundred AU. Now this. I'm found in the constellation of Musca. Hear this. I'm a B type star with an exoplanet that does orbit. I have an exoplanet that goes by the name you see. It is HD. 100546B I'm HD 100546B I was discovered at the very large telescope in Chile Astronomers think I might be a large planet or brown dwarf Located in the disk around my star on my orbital course I'm a gas giant exoplanet, they know this for sure My mass is 752 Jupiters One orbit takes 249 years around my star I'm 53 AU away from my star That is far My discovery was announced in 2014 That's all I have to report That's enough about me I am back again It's HD 100546 Let me tell you a bit more about my disc My circumstellar disc was observed by the Hubble telescope Which should spiral patterns what they mean no one really knows My disc is fairly flat With a circular shape With a wide gap thought to be carved by my exoplanet How great When looking at the night sky Try to locate the constellation of Musca But you have to look late I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disc My name is AG100546 I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disc From the constellation of Musca Now hear this We're Alpha Centauri, the closest star system to the solar system your Earth is from. Alpha Centauri is a triple star system. We're 4.37 light years away from your sun. We're Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, which forms a pair of stars called binary. Alpha Centauri A officially Rigel Cantorus. Alpha Centauri. Centauri B officially Toliman I trust Centauri C officially Proxima Centauri Here we'll learn about our size and our luminosity Alpha Centauri A and B are sun-like stars We're the brightest stars in the constellation Centaurus by far Alpha Centauri A has 1.1 times the mass And 1.5 times the luminosity of the sun in this class Alpha Centauri B is smaller and cooler, you should know. At 0.9 times the sun's mass and 0.4 the luminosity shown. We orbit around a common center or around one another so you'd understand better. With an orbital period of almost 80 years by far. And from a distance we're so close we look like one star. 
I'm Proxima Centauri, a small and faint red dwarf star. You cannot see me with the naked eye, though I'm the closest star by far. I'm about 4.24 light years from the Earth, and I'm the closest star to the Sun for what that is worth. Discovered in 1915 by astronomer Robert Eins, I'm sure, in South Africa at the Union Observatory in Johannesburg. My Latin name Proxima Centauri means when this is defined. The nearest star of Centaurus, that's all that's assigned. We're Alpha Centauri, the closest star system to the solar system your Earth is from. Alpha Centauri is a triple star system. We're 4.37 light years away from your sun. We're Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, which forms a pair of stars called binary. Alpha Centauri A officially Rigel Centaurus. Alpha Centauri B officially Toliman I trust. Centauri C officially Proxima Centauri. Here we'll learn about our size and our luminosity. double planet in 800 years will clutter on the winter solstice December 21st in 2020 look to the night sky to see this event the joy it'll bring is plenty alignments between Jupiter and Saturn are pretty rare only occurring around once in every 20 years but this upcoming conjunctions exceptionally rare only because of how close we planets will appear. It said the last time this occurred was in medieval times. In the year of 1226 was the closest that we aligned. 
Alignments between these two planets happens once every 20 years. But this conjunction will be very rare because of how close we appear. We'll be aligning on the same day as the winter solstice. On December 21st, 2020, the whole world can witness this. If you live in the northern hemisphere, looking low in the southwestern sky, you can see a shining bright shortly after sunset with the naked eye. We'll appear extremely close for about a month ahead, but we won't make such a close approach again until the year 2400. Typically, Jupiter orbits the sun every 12 years. Saturn's orbit around the sun takes about 30 years. Every couple of decades, Jupiter laps Saturn in flight. Be sure to watch the sky December 21st in 2020 at night. Jupiter and Saturn will come within 0.1 degrees of each other. Forming the first visible double planet in 800 years will clutter. On the winter solstice, December 21st in 2020. Look to the night sky to see this event. The joy it'll bring is plenty. Jupiter and Saturn will come within 0.1 degrees of each other. Forming the first visible double planet in 800 years will clutter. On the winter solstice, December 21st, in 2020. Look to the night sky to see this event, the joy it'll bring is plenty.